Where my dogs at? Yeah, welcome me back. Where my dogs at? Yeah, welcome me back. Where my dogs at? Yeah, welcome me back. It's not a nigga single again. Yeah, I'm single. In the club tryna mingle. Fuck relationships, cause a nigga never been for. Can't have just one like a Pringle. So I'ma keep it simple. Listen here, icy on my wrist of weird. No guilt, I'm in the clear. Photos of my ex on my Instagram disappear. Yeah, I'm single. In the club tryna mingle. Fuck relationships, cause a nigga never been for. So that was how we started, but um, but that was when Ninth and I first met. But we didn't meet. Well, I didn't realize he made beats until way later. Like probably like damn near a year later, he actually played me some of his first beats. And so we just started recording. And um, you know, by this time, Pooh and I we were hanging. And so we just kind of started just working together, just making stuff. Then um, that was the beginning. That was yeah, that was '98. We were all students at Central. Mm -hmm. And um, that was just yeah. That and, was how and, I and knife was knife wonder was making beats that was like the weird beats, right? Because of what you <laughs> right, were right, used, right, right. because of what you were used to hearing <laughs> yeah. in North Carolina, right? Yeah, it was. I mean, it was it, it, it was but, beats we were used. To, it was beats that we enjoyed because you know we listened to Wu Tang and you know mm, Slum, Slum and all, and that, all yeah. that. So it was we we understood what he was making. Mm -hmm. We just didn't know originally. Well, because like even when I first met, I didn't know he made beats. Mm -hmm. It was later we found, oh, you make beats? Like that was a yeah. We was just homeboys at first. It wasn't even about no music. Like, yeah, and they were fire. It was yeah. like you like once again. It's that same thing. It's like I hear these things on the radio, or I buy the CDs or the tapes, because tapes were still a thing. <laughs> <laughs> but when you see some like nigga, you made that here. <laughs> on a computer, right? right, right. That, you know, because that was another part of it where you know at that time that's when everybody was MPC, you know, hardware. You know what I mean? Um, and it started you know, shifting to FL Studio. Yes, right. You know what I mean? And Holy loops. He mm -hmm. really was, and you know, and Knife really was, you know, a pioneer in that aspect. You know, I remember him pulling up and playing me, just showing me beats, and I was like, "So how are you doing this?" and he pulled it up and, you know, the computer we recorded our first album on was like... A compact. A compact. Yeah, like Jesus. every like your iPhone is more powerful than that. <laughs> like legit, you know what right. I mean? And um, so now, nah, bro, that was kind of how we started. So for us, it wasn't weird. I, we didn't look at it as weird. We looked at it like, yeah, this is the shit. Yeah, this is, you know, this is us. Like, this mm -hmm. is the stuff we grew up on. Mm -hmm. And um, but it was at the time where the industry, sonic wise... You know, this is, yeah, so this is like 98, 99. Yeah, so this is like Swizz. Swizz, Beats by the Pound. Yeah, yeah, it was the Life keyboard. Was out, organized yeah. noise. Well, that didn't come to late because Heart was, because Blueprint was like two, that was oh Blue, one. Blueprint. No, 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 not Blueprint. I'm talking about Heart Not Light. Oh, Heart Not Light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heart Not Light. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Reject. But you had Organized Noise mm -hmm. at the time. You had Outcast still bubbling. Absolutely. Master P, obviously. To make moves. What yeah. year was um, P.D. Pablo in North Carolina? Oh, two. P.D. was like, oh, yeah, that was like, oh, two. And, and um, at the same time, y'all was bubbling, right? Yeah, but it was, the thing with P.D. was, and, you know, P.D., like, he was our delegate. You know, big respect to P.D., big shouts to him um, for laying that groundwork. P.D. was, he was, I mean, he was a little older than us. So, like, our, our OGs knew him, like, the Butter team. They were like a DJ crew in Durham. Mm -hmm. They knew him, but Pooh and I didn't really know him. Yeah. And, like, we would do interviews and... People be asking us, so what's it like working with Petey Pablo? And we like, we don't know. We don't know. Just because we in North Carolina don't mean we work Exactly. With I'm like, yo, I just, I'm like, listen, respect so to him, but. I never connected? Nah, wow. never connected, wow. man. And, and that was the thing. Like, we, you know, because the thing with the LB story was that, you know, a lot of the other artists that came that rep NC up until that point, even if you go all the way back to the days of like, you know, Yag Fu Front. Right. Oh mm. God. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Still. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like '94. You know they were from North Carolina, but they, you know, had to go to New York to make it. You know, J Cole. You know what I'm saying? He broke out of out of New York. Yeah. Um, Petey. You know he. You know him working with Timberland that came out of New York. LB. We made it from the crib. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. we came out at a time where you didn't have to go. It's like okay, if I can put this up on the net. And it immediately goes everywhere, then shit. You ain't gotta go nowhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of New York made it out of Atlanta. 
Like, no, New, New York, York made it out of New made it out of every place else but New York. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> New York made it out of everywhere else all of but our New biggest, York. All of our biggest stars over the last... 10, 20, 50, 10, 10, LA. 10 years had to all had to go somewhere. Waka so. Flocka, yeah. Atlanta. Like yeah, there's yeah. a lot of artists that went Nikki. south. Nikki. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. what was the, what was those sessions like with Knife? Like and was he the only only producer that you this guys is the, were this is the resident with producer in I'm, I'm a producer, no, so I'm, I'm always man. into producing um, and artistic stuff. So. Those said those early sessions, this shit was like a, it's like a social club. <laughs> it'd be this many people. Y'all would, like, it'd be this many people. It'd be this nah, we was in uh yeah, we was in uh my man's apartment, Cesar, uh, Cesar Comanche. Comanche. It'd be like this many people in the room. Mm. Like, and Tay, the mic is like, in like the right middle. in the middle. Mm. Like Tay and I, were, we were right at his crib, or we were right in his car. So mm. we we were right together. We'll do that before we come in. But we'd be like, all right, everybody, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. <laughs> all right, go, nigga. Right. And then you rap. And so those times, I think a thing, one of the things that people didn't understand about Little Brother. Tay was the main producer in Little Brother. Mm. He was the guy, the ideas, concepts, damn near the structuring. So it's kind of like what, uh, not to cut you up, what D Dot said, right? When D Dot was working one with thing him. About making the beat and another thing about, about producing. producing. Yeah. A person could bring a beat to you and you'd be like, oh, I know how to jazz this shit up. Exactly. Okay. exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's not to say Knife can't produce. It's just right. in Little Brother, it was a different dynamic. This yeah, was the producer. Yeah. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. And so. It was a thing of, for us, it was like, we would do our raps. It was like, all right, Pooh, you rap here. Okay, then I did my rap. I'm going to go sit in the back and chill. <laughs> and then they would work on building the song out. Mm. And then we'd just be in there and be like a, like I said, like a social gathering. We'd just be in there talking and we just use people. Oh, you here? Yo, come come say this Come line. do this part. We need everybody say, ho, oh, I need everybody, ho on three. Like it was, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It was that kind right, of shit. Right, right, Yeah. Yeah, every session. Like, and, so, and so that so knife was the only produce the only beat maker there at that uh, time. There was on the no other first, produce, well, other beat maker. Uh, Centric had the get up. He had the get up. Yeah, Centric. He was another member of our crew. Um, he also made beats on computer, and Centric was raw. He did the get up on the listening. Centric was crazy. He ended up losing his beats in like a hard drive crash. Some oh, RZA shit. And then he ended up going to law school. <laughs> He became. Yeah, a, he's wow. a lawyer now. Like, oh, <laughs> like big time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Big time, nah, man. that's my brother, man. Big yeah. up the Centric. But yeah, at the time, yeah, it was a Centric. Um, crisis. Crisis ended up coming a little later. Yeah, a little later. He, he was, was still young. in high school. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Crisis wow. was in high school. He, he was. was a he was coming to the. He was coming mm -hmm. to the college radio station. Sean Don is actually who found him. Mm. He was coming to the radio station, and Sean Don was like, "Yo, shh, this kid, high school, we be at the radio station." He raw, he got beats. And that's he was making beats on computer too. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. how he ended up coming into the fold. I think, I think this whole thing is is what makes the Atlantic trip so crazy. Because again, the album doesn't do well. Y'all having beef. A lot of people will say Fonte never went to where we thought he yeah. was gonna go. We never, he, he never three stacked it out. You know, we never saw you do that. Yeah, and it all seemed to happen when you hit the majors. Yeah, so it's easy to place blame and think it was because of that. Of course. Yeah. Nah, yeah, and, and that was a big reason why, you know, we really wanted, in making our documentary, you know, we really wanted to tell our story just in a beautiful and honest way. And just to let people see, it's like, listen, man, like, it's never, the, the fall of the group was never the fault of one person. It was never the fault of one label. You know, this is the music, but it's like, dude, we are people in our 20s, trying to figure this shit out while at the same time trying to figure out how to negotiate a business. And, you know, this was something that, and I, I tell younger artists all the time, it's even worse now, you know, with the internet and how things can go viral. You know what I mean? Your music can travel further and it can go faster than you have the ability to develop as a human being. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When people talk about artist development, artist development is human development. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it don't matter how great you are as an artist. If you got an ankle bracelet on, 
that's as far as we going, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> like, it don't matter. You have a number one record, whatever. It's like, you all right, right. Hey, right. right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nah, yeah, I just got off papers. So oh, so, yeah, salute, yeah, bro. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, but so you know, right? You know, know. Yeah, it's so, like, so far you can go. Yeah, so. so you got an ankle brace on the chat was like. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, and that's the part where, you know, we were, you know, we signed, uh, uh, I think the big part of Little Brother's story is that we were friends. We were just learning each other as friends and as people. And then we automatically were put into a position where we had to become business partners. Mm -hmm. And dude, that is, those are two completely different things. And we were yeah. all growing into men. Yeah, right. yeah. This wasn't us doing this shit in our forties nah. now. You know what I mean? So you, we growing into men. We're trying to learn how to be friends, mm -hmm. and now we have to learn how to be business partners. Bro, that shit was. How, how was, was it going? Oh, on first say, say it again. I said that shit was. It was bound to be <coughs> disastrous. <laughs> All eyes on me. Do you? Cause I'm doing me. Still shine with no jewelry. I would rather have the unity. It's gonna be you if it's you and me. No tears in my mama eyes. Got a team full of routed eyes. Hail Mary, nigga, rock a bar. Rock a bar. All eyes on me. Made it out the hood, I'm so grateful. Never know what talent gonna take. You. Jealous niggas never made a breakthrough. That's why they watch it so hateful. All eyes on me. They say the top is so lonely.